In this lecture, we're going to talk about the settlement of the Great Black Swamp, which is a region of northwestern Ohio and eastern Indiana. This map depicts glacial Lake Maumee, which was a precursor of the present-day Lake Erie. The lake formed approximately 14,000 years ago, and its presence changed the geography of northwest Ohio, southeastern Michigan, and eastern Indiana. One of the effects of the receding waters and ice associated with Lake Maumee was the creation of what became known as the Great Black Swamp. At its peak, the Great Black Swamp was over 40 miles in width and 120 miles in length. And at one point, the swamp once encompassed nearly 10,000 square miles in area. The Great Black Swamp uh, proved to be a barrier to white settlement in the region, and it was not drained and settled until the at least heavily until the second half of the 19th century. Even for Native American groups, this was more of a region for hunting or uh, short-term um, habitation rather than major settlements, which tended to be uh, a little ways away from the swamp. There were a few noteworthy exceptions to this, but even those tended to be um, on uh, prairies or uh, ridges, uh, not in the swamp itself. Um, it was a very uh, mosquito-laden place, as we will talk about later in the course. These days, the land that once made up the Great Black Swamp is highly productive farmland. In this next image, you can see some of the features of the swamp. The red indicates the ancestral Black Swamp, the Great Black Swamp. Um, the yellowish region shows portions of Indiana that were once part of the swamp. The border of the watershed, or the sort of the boundaries of the swamp, are noted by the dotted lines here. And uh, you can see that the Great Black Swamp encompassed areas of uh, southeastern Michigan, eastern Indiana, and much of present-day northwest Ohio. This is an image I took of remnants of the Great Black Swamp in western Lucas County. This particular patch of swamp is located about 15 miles from downtown uh, Toledo, Ohio, due west. There are many uh, such small pockets of swamp that remain in northwest Ohio. I suspect that if uh, human habitation ended suddenly, it would probably be just a matter of five to six decades before the land returned to its natural swampy state. Without the um, drainage systems being maintained and the pump systems that divert water away from um, flat land and into the creeks and rivers that drain into the uh, Lake Erie watershed, um, the swamp would quickly uh, return. There were a wide variety of swamp types in the region. Pictured here is a remnant of a swamp prairie in western Lucas County. Some of these swamp prairies were wet swamps with reedy grasses attracting waterfowl, while others emerged on sandy moraines and were dry swamps. Prior to being drained, this section of swamp prairie was nearly seven miles in length and approximately one mile wide. There were a number of barriers to white settlement of the Great Black Swamp and the surrounding regions. One of the biggest hurdles, of course, was the sheer massive size of the swamp, which was over 120 miles in length and up to 40 miles wide. The swamp proved to be very difficult to cross, even for people passing through. It took decades after settlement began for the first road to be built across the swamp. Um, in addition, the inconsistent terrain and depths of the swamp made it tricky to even try to walk across it. There are countless stories from the time period of people trudging along in one to two feet of water before suddenly sinking into a hidden hole eight to ten feet deep. And the depths of the swamp also varied according to season. The fact that several thousand Native Americans lived in and around the Great Black Swamp certainly delayed white settlement. I've seen figures ranging from between 3,000 and 10,000 Native Americans um, after the uh, War of 1812 in and around the swamp. Tensions certainly ran high between whites and Native Americans who were you know, defensive of the lands they considered to be theirs. As late as 1815, there were recorded killings of white settlers by Native Americans. Of course, both sides were guilty of violence those surviving records of white attacks on Native Americans in the swamp are uh, less plentiful. 
A great deal of military activity in the region served to slow development of the Great Black Swamp, some of which we've already covered in this class. Uh, the numerous conflicts of the Northwest Indian War, which lasted from 1788 to 1795, delayed white settlement and disruptions due to later with the uh, Tecumseh's War and the War of 1812 also interfered with settlement. And these wars also sent some settlers back east. Uh, this map shows some of the major battles and confrontations in the northern campaign in the War of 1812, many of which were right in and around the Great Black Swamp region. The Great Black Swamp was once home to a unique and diverse ecosystem teeming with wildlife. Uh, in particular, the area was noted for animals dangerous to humans, such as wolves, panthers, cougars, and bears. And it seems that the numbers of dangerous animals in the Great Black Swamp may have temporarily increased when white settlement first began in Ohio, as the swamp offered considerable protection. Living in and around the Great Black Swamp was thus more difficult for humans, especially white settlers. Malaria was perhaps the biggest barrier to settlement of the Great Black Swamp. The disease was endemic to the region until the very late 19th century when the swamp was successfully drained. Mortality with malaria was quite high in the first six decades of the 19th century, and the high number of annual deaths contributed to um, a lack of population growth while also discouraging new settlers from moving to the area. While there were a few scattered white settlers in the area uh, prior to the War of 1812, the land in northwest Ohio remained largely uninhabited by whites until after the War of 1812. Even for Native Americans, this was um, a less than heavily populated area. It was more used as a hunting preserve than anything else. Um, an 1817 treaty signed at the foot of the rapids near Maumee began the formal process of white settlement in the region um, in and around the Great Black Swamp. In that treaty, uh, Native Americans gave up all rights to lands in Ohio with the exception of nine fairly small reservations. The former Indian lands were then auctioned at a sale held at Fort Miggs. One of the earliest permanent buildings uh, in the region was a facility known simply enough as the warehouse. There's a artist's depiction on this particular slide. Constructed by William Oliver and Martin Baum, the business catered to port trade on the Maumee. It is near the site of the modern-day Oliver House in downtown Toledo. One of the earliest permanent settlements was the village of Port Lawrence, which was founded in 1817. The village was located at the mouth of Swan Creek, which empties into the Maumee River just south of downtown Toledo. The Port Lawrence Company planned a town featuring up to 500 lots. They were going to set aside three for public uses, uh, one for a courthouse and a jail, and two outside the town as cemeteries. The village of Maumee was also incorporated in 1817. The first settlements of Maumee were built at the foot of the rapids in the Maumee River. The map on this slide shows the location of the competing towns of Maumee and Perrysburg, which grew up on opposite sides of the Maumee River from each other. In its early years, the economy of the area revolved around the port trade, and Maumee was also um, a significant base for Christian missionaries. Maumee was also uh, a major competitor with upriver cities. The village of Vistula was located just north of Port Lawrence. The two villages were separated by what is now Cherry Street in downtown Toledo. Vistula contained many more residential dwellings and less um, industry than Port Lawrence. Today, the Vistula district in Toledo's north end is the area that was once the village. Manhattan was a village incorporated in 1835. This village was located northwest of Vistula and Port Lawrence. In 1836, the Bank of Manhattan opened, and the Ottawa River served as the entry point to the village for ships. Um, unfortunately, Manhattan never really took off, as the Ottawa River proved to be too shallow to support deeper drafting vessels, and for uh, many years the town languished. This map shows the location of the two nearby towns of Port Lawrence and Vistula. 
on the uh, northwest bank of the Maumee River. The city of Toledo, which formed after the merger of Vistula and Port Lawrence, formally incorporated in 1837, and there were approximately 1,200 residents at the time of incorporation. A, a survey that year uh, showed that there were a total of seven hotels, 35 stores, there were eight saloons, two sawmills, three schools, and two newspapers at the time of incorporation. Later, the city of Toledo absorbed Manhattan to the north, and growth in Toledo really began to spike in the late 19th century. And this brings to a close our brief look at the settling of the Great Black Swamp.